Welcome everybody. Uh, hopefully a lot of you guys that are watching now are back from last month when I did regulations. I'm trying to find a good, pretty good flow over here. And uh, what's going to happen is, I'll get right into it. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, because an hour just sometimes doesn't give enough time to do what I think should be done. But uh, I have a tendency to put 10 pounds of do doing a five pound payout so hopefully hopefully that's not gonna happen so you know but uh today's subject we're gonna be talking about of course air brake systems i'm gonna try to cover as much as i can with the air system we're gonna use a live air board and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute because i love that touchy feely thing you know now just so you guys know all the stuff that i do with my trainings over here is i'm not a necessarily a manufacturer you know like bendix or whatever the case may be right? i tend to work with no matter who and even with dorman over here for example they took uh they purchased dayton dayton's been around forever with the brake system it makes all the sense in the world so but what i like to offer is i like to offer the real stuff you know I actually this morning I was out there on the floor working on brakes and everything so I use a combination of whatever the PowerPoints uh, knowledge little bit pieces there and I definitely want to always throw in the real world stuff because no matter what the manufacturers do there's our world out there and our world is basically you know what look at my hands that's our world so sometimes it's a little bit different than the book world so let's jump right into this eh? Uh, there's a slide again that's just repetition I don't want to spend much time in there this is me you have it in a handout I'm kind of shy I'm, I can tell you all sorts of stuff I've done year after year after year but that doesn't matter what matters what counts is really what I'm gonna do so the subject matter at hand eh? it has to start out with the brake system purpose what are we trying to do here what what are we trying to do with these commercial vehicles trying to hold the vehicle station maintain a safe downhill speed when i do my regular brake classes over here to be honest with you i find it easier to break all the system the whole brake system into three categories brake parking brake service brake emergency brake system so I know I'm going through fast in some of these slides but the handouts are yours and I, I meant to tell you guys too I'm gonna walk over to the computer here you have a chat box here that if you have questions I'll try to periodically go over and take a look at the chat box I might ask a question so go for it but given that we have an hour and time to do this I can't kind of like monitor the board slides and do the chat box so you know we'll do the best we can so back to the slides over here again if you were if you saw last oh by the way you can go on youtube and you can go google uh link up to dormant products and you'll see a lot of their training stuff over there and the one i did last month is there too so this is just a little reminder we are regulated FMVSS that stands for Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard 121 they're basically they're the engineers that say hey this has to be like this this has to be like this they got involved with the ABS with the stopping distances lights hoses you name it they're in there so that's 121 pertains to heavy duty brakes 105 would be hydraulic brakes let me just give you a real kind of a quickie real fast what is it establishes performance equipment requirements okay purpose after all ensure safe braking performance they're in your handouts guys just read them who did it belong to they apply to everybody trucks buses trailers and so on so we're all covered now the other thing that if you're in the commercial motor vehicles the big guy over here that chances are pretty good that you this is the area you really need to get comfortable okay I'll hold up this book this is the safety regulations here okay if you can zoom in okay. federal motor vehicle safety regulations carrier safety regulations this is the Bible last month I kind of tried to go through it a little bit but there's this section part 393 deals with parts and accessories that are required on a vehicle and uh, by the way I'm lucky to have the guy behind the camera here is pretty good as Bobby Barrett 
Uh, he's a retired commercial vehicle New York State trooper, so uh, you know if I make a mistake, he can holler. You know, but uh, Bobby, by the way, was years ago one of the first guys that, with some other troopers, went through my break course. So uh, he's retired. So we spend a lot of time together. It must be nice to be retired. Uh, anyway, 393.40, if you get a chance, you should get one of those books, and it specifies what's required, performance standards, and so on. And you can see service brake conforms requirements, parking brake. So I want you to get comfortable. Another section, general bus truck tracker, must have brakes adequate, control the movement, stop and hold. And it goes on and on and on, and I know I'm rushing, okay, in this portion over here, but you get the drift of it. One of these days, I'm going to do one of these lunches, I thought about it, I might just do a whole lunch and learn on federal annual inspections, you know, because there's some do's and don'ts. I'm not always happy with the way those regulations are written, but that's a whole different story we'll get into. This goes hand in hand, and you're going to find that a lot of the slides, everything I put together, there's a reasoning behind it. So I want to ask everybody, what are you seeing here? Of course, most certainly you're seeing a dashboard, you know, and uh, but you got this little thing over here, so, you know. To make a little bit of a time here, okay, this is where I was heading here. You see this over here? Okay, our button here. So keep that button in mind. It's tucked away behind. Of course, a lot of companies now, they've gone into ELDs. So when they went into the ELDs, you make it comfortable for the driver to kind of like look at the ELD and everything and so on. So, you know, this winds up blocking sometimes. But read this. You have it in your handout system separate from service brakes. And if you read it in your handout and you follow me, it basically says, here's my button here, okay? It basically says that when I'm sitting down in here, this means of, if I have an issue, okay, has to be something where I can read it, my, reach it, my seatbelt is on and stuff, so you can visualize my seatbelt is on, okay? Whoop, I need to fold it, okay? So in that picture that you had over there, is it really readily available? And technically, to tell you the truth, if <laughs> an enforcement guy could probably even write that up if they wanted to, but that's kind of getting a little petty. You won't see anybody do it. But you know what? If somebody comes along and says, hey, you know what? I had an issue. There was an emergency. I couldn't pull it. If I was doing an accident investigation, I would probably say, okay, I got to follow through. What did that driver say? So this is where regulations become very important. Real fast, before we get right into the meats of it, just in case this is your first exposure, your first exposure to an air brake system, you're going to hop in there, you just got hired out by a fleet or whatever. I tried to tell everybody, and I put this together more for drivers, entry level drivers, and that basically is first time in a particular truck, do a dry run of all the instrumentation gauges and so on, fumbling looking for various switches. This is where my little bit of honesty comes in. I have a class A, you know, I got the tractor trailer license off and of course I can drive anything there is for air brakes. I, this is a, I shouldn't say this, but I make that mistake too. Can you imagine, I, there's times I've had to, I'm going down the road and I'm like, oh, where's this button here? I need to look at this, I need to look at that. It's like, duh, you know. So it's, you know, basically what I'm saying is, you know, I can be, you know, I should be following what I'm preaching, I guess, you know. Bottom line is, on the road is not the place to do it, so you get your caught with your pants down. So next slide real fast, all right? If this is your first exposure, you're gonna have some gauges, okay? And what happens here is you're gonna have a primary air, secondary air, all right? And you want it to reach a certain level for certain reasons. And I'll get to that. So I got the arrows, you know, pointing. This is just an example, okay? Try to get comfortable with that. Picture above is with the key on, okay? Now, the reason I'm saying the brakes are applied, some vehicles actually have, this is a split disc. This is the initial one. This is with the key on, this over here. So if I step on the brake, 
Some will have an application you know, say, hey, you're, you're really stomping on it, you're putting a lot of air to it. And to be honest with you, in your normal braking, when you're just trying to slow down, you're basically, when you step on this pedal here, you're only probably going to use 5 to 10 pounds or whatever 10 pounds, you know, you're not going to use the 120 pounds. So you get comfortable with that. Then of course you have the buttons and I'm gonna to get to the buttons in a second but you have it in here okay if you're hooked a trailer you're gonna use a red button. Okay? This is an MV3 module Bendix module and it's a little unique it allows you to do a lot of stuff that you know previously you would have to have three buttons in a day to do that so you can manipulate turn you can have your tr truck or tractor excuse me tractor button out push your trailer button in your tractor would stay parked locked wheels are on it ain't moving but you can release the trailer brakes and work on the trailer it's equivalent I look as having a wheel chalk over here but you need to get comfortable with with that okay uh, Again, it's a repetition. Supplies air to trailer, used to exhaust air from spring brakes. Yellow button is used to release spring brakes, park brakes. Right. Now, you're going to have typically, and you can have two tanks. You don't have to have three tanks, but you're typically going to wind up with a supply, primary, secondary. Supply, known as a wet tank. I'll go to the board, walk through all that. It's the first tank in line. Right. And again, a supply tank is not required. A primary, secondary tanks both have automatic manual drain valves. So I, what I did was I picked these slides from my regular two-day brake course, and I would always be able to slow down, but I'm going to try to cover a lot. These are gauges, again, that you saw on the dashboard required. The first slide I had on was the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard 121. Remember, all that stuff is in there, okay? This is what we're going to start playing with. I'm so excited to get into it because I'm one of those touchy-feely guys. <laughs> Hopefully all you guys are that way too, you know. So let's start out. Pretend this board can drive, you know. Uh, not necessarily the safest, I'll be very honest with you. I got a leak here and there, so probably if I got pulled over by guys like Bobby over here, you know, if he was a commercial vehicle enforcement guy, he probably put me out of service for a few things. But that's okay. I'm a big boy, I can handle those guys, you know. No, <laughs> they're all good guys. Uh, I've worked with them for the longest, longest time, done training for them. With this board now, I want you to keep one thing in mind. This tank here is my supply tank. So generically, I got three tanks. Just so you know, this is my secondary tank. I'm gonna repeat it a few times. My secondary tends to take care of my front service. I'm gonna keep it simple this time. Okay? Primary, which is green, takes care of my rear. Okay, I gotta tuck away, that's my exercise for the day. Okay? So we'll leave it at that. Supply, secondary front, primary rear. So I want to go down the road, I'm going to build up this air, I'm going to wind up covering this once in a while because it's going to get a little loud, that's my speaker over there. I'm going to build it up over there. For me to go down the road, what do I have to do? You know? Then this is where I said I don't, I don't have time to monitor the chat box, but for me to go down the road, yes, I have to release my spring brake over here. So that means... All I'm doing is I'm taking this waiting air over here and it's waiting at the button here, keeping it stupidly simple. I open up a passageway. This air passageway is going to go back to the back of my chamber here. Okay? And I'll pick up a chamber in my hand in a second. Okay? And it's going to squeeze a spring and I'll hold the chamber up and it's going to release my park brakes. From that point on, any time that I step on the brake, my service brakes will come on. All right? And my front will come on. What did I do here when I pushed this button in? All right? I'm going to hold up a chamber here. This chamber this is a spring brake. Everybody calls it a spring brake, and the reason he calls it spring brake is because of this guy right here, that back portion over here. It's a heavy spring in here, equivalent to this. Okay. So, in there also is a diaphragm, like this. 
There's actually two diaphragms because the front part is the service brake. For me to step on the brake to the front part over here to make it free, I got to squeeze this coil spring in. So this is what we did. Don't make fun of my drawing. I, pay, I spend a lot of money. I asked my wife, listen, I got to do a lot of drawings. My drawings suck. You know, I see one of those college things that offer drawing classes. Can I go? She says, yeah. I says, oh, she says, hey, honey, I love you. Go for it. Valentine's Day, by the way. Or it was yesterday. Don't count these. That tire diaphragm that I had in my head, typically, typically you'll find most of the time it's a type 30 type of chambers and I can spend hours there's type 30, 36, type 24s and so on. What I did, the question I should have asked you guys first and I forgot to do because I'm so excited doing this, I should have put on a chat, how much air do I need for this button to stay in? And most of you guys would have said 60 PSI. And if you said 60 PSI, you're correct. Because usually below 60 PSI, those of you that work on this stuff, you know you got to do this. You're trying to build up the air. It doesn't want to stay in until you get 60 PSI. So now, what you did was you put 60 PSI don't count them over all 30 of these square inches. So what happens here is you take 60 PSI times 30 square inch. And what are we going to have, guys? Anybody? I'll walk to the chat for a second here. Anybody want to give me an answer? Okay. Already it's nice. I see so many said 60 PSI, 60 and so on. 1,800 pounds. Anybody else? A couple more so I can get back to board. 1,800 pounds is correct. 1,800 is correct. Okay. So I'm going to break in a little bit because what happens is generally everybody will say 1800 PSI and it's not PSI it's pounds of force if I was doing my regular brake class I would tell you that everything we do with a brake system is we're trying to develop forces and actually to tell you the truth your braking happens between a tire and the road between the rubber and the road okay but given with that so we have 1800 pounds of force so watch this that spring has 1800 pounds of force so when I do this basically that chamber just came out with 1800 pounds of force okay now that 1800 pounds of force don't forget it's going to be hooked up with a slack adjuster there's an s cam you're going to have brake shoes and that'll shove the shoes against the drum with 1800 pounds force but i'm going to tell you right now if your brakes are out of adjustment badly or there's something wrong you could have a million pounds of force and it's all academic because what happens is, say your brakes are out of adjustment, and say, for example, it reaches two, two and a half to three inches, this cannot go any farther. You're kind of screwed a little bit. Right? This inhibits you. Like I said, you can stomp on it all you want, you can have a million pounds, and this housing will stop it. And that's why when you get on the roadside, you get violations on brake adjustments. And if you look at your violation sheets, you will very rarely see anything over three inches. Even though, even though the shoes have not hit the drum yet. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of the relationship between brake adjustment and this. Now let me get back on the board here, you know. Let me get back on the board. So air, it's waiting here. Air is going to the back and it would be the back. Guys, if this is your first exposure. You gotta make sure if you change one of these things, it's the back fitting, the farthest 
away from the push rod. That's for your spring brake. The front one is for your service brake. The reason I'm saying it, lately I'm starting to see a lot of vehicles where guys have changed chambers and they're actually backwards. You know, and they basically bad adjusted to it, you know. Again, <laughs> button is out. I have air waiting here, going nowhere. It's waiting at the button over here. I push my button in. If you follow that red line, it's going to go to the back. So if I took air away, you saw it come out. It doesn't matter how you lose the air over here, okay? If I pop this supply line over here, it's going to do that, right? Make sense? Mechanical park. It's that stupidly simple. So I'm going to do something here again. I'm going to push this button back in here. Okay. I'm going to make sure I got my air filled. And what I did was I told you guys, right, in the beginning, my supply, secondary takes care of the front, my primary takes care of the rear. And right. we'll leave it at that right now. Air in, brakes are released. I have my service brakes, right, all day long. Now, if I pop this, this came out, right? This takes care of the rear. I know I'm saying it about a hundred times already. I want you to think about this. This takes care of my front. So what do you think is going to happen when I drain this tank over here? All you guys on the chat, you know, let me know. It's okay, it takes a little time. If you guys are like me, you're probably one of those one finger uh, typer guys. Oh no, your younger guys are pretty fast. Brakes lock up, parking brakes will apply, and so on and so on. Okay. So let's see what happens. Now I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna cover my thing because I'm gonna actually drain it. Okay. You can see the gauge go down. Oh, come on. You gotta be freaking kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. I can't believe I've been doing this for 30 years. I did revamp the board, but that should have nothing to do with it. Come on! <laughs> Guys, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Nah, just I'm just messing with you guys, okay? What happened was I love doing that. It keeps me practicing my Taekwondo all the time, you know. But anyway, it's doing exactly what it was meant to do. Okay? What's gonna happen is I am not going to have all my brakes. I lost this guy here. Eh? What's going to happen is when I step on my brakes, and I'm going to, Bobby, you're going to have to go from the front to the rear. I'm going to step on the brakes. I will not have rear brakes, okay? But I will have front brakes. <laughs> See that? I did not have rear brakes, I got front brakes, right? Everybody see that? I have something wrong. This, I'm from Buffalo, this not, does not give me the right to go from Buffalo to New York City. Eh? I have something wrong. But, the way the system works, it allows me to be able to still drive in a controllable fashion still have some braking okay I'll get to that in a minute if I switched and drained this tank and left this full the opposite would happen I wouldn't have front brakes but I had rear brakes so I'm gonna tell you what happened here 
these systems have a few valves in there that you do not need to go up and down the road. You need the certain particular valves in here in the event you have an issue just like I just did over here. I lost this tank over here. Okay? Basically your most common valves that need to work are these. I'm pointing at this. It's a one-way check valve. These tanks have one-way check valves. The way they're plumbed, okay, is that if I don't have them in here and I drain this tank over here, okay, chances are pretty good if these guys weren't working, this would drain also. If this drain, okay, I'm going down the road doing 60 miles an hour, okay, and I got somebody that's tailgating me, you know, four or five feet away from the ass end over there, and these brakes all of a sudden come on and my brakes are adjusted, that person is going to be part of the load. I'll probably take them along for a ride for wherever. So we have the one-way check valves. Up here, we, there's a two-way check valve in here. So that's why I kept saying there's two sources of air going here. The two-way check valve up here says, listen, you lost this. I'm going to shuttle over. So I still have air in my secondary. So my secondary air I'm going to use to keep my brakes released. And of course, the way it's plumbed, that secondary, of course, going through the foot valve is going to apply these brakes. How would you know that? The reason, I'm, the reason I'm really concentrating on this is if you were in the shop, if you were a technician, just think about all the air brake stuff you do. What, what happens if you change tanks and the lines and everything? How do you know everything's working the way it should? Eh? You don't know if the system is working correctly until you actually force it to work this particular way. Because I do not need these things again to go up and down the road. I need them in the event that I have an issue here and I did a purpose for issue. So I highly suggest any once in a while, you don't have to do it with every vehicle, do what I call an air brake health check. Just go into that truck, eh? you got your air built up, drain the tank, and all you got to do is, you know, of course, keep your uh, park brake in, by the way, okay, your button is in. Eh? All you got to do is go up in the dash, okay, and look in the dash, look at your gauges. If one went down and the other stayed up, you just proved out to yourself that these one-way check valves work. You're doing it now. It's not being done if something happens on the road and they don't work. Now, also, this did not come out. The reason it didn't come out, you're actually saying my two-way check valve is working. By the way, you have two-way check valves all over here. You know, you'll see them all over the place. Safety. You step on the brake, and I have my front brake. I'm adamant about this. I'm so adamant about this because, again, I mentioned to everybody that what happens is, unfortunately, I'm going to pop this button out, okay? Unfortunately, if you're changing tanks, those of you that actually work out, think of all the lines you go in there. You can get confused. You can get lost. Hey, airline is an airline is an airline, okay? So you can imagine, I, I'll do this here. Can you imagine all these lines are off? Pop them all off over here, pop these off and everything else. I mean, you know, now you're going to look at a cluster over here. You pop this off over here. You're going to look at a cluster. You're putting the tank on over here. How do you know that you're putting every one of these back together correctly? Am I doing it correctly, Bobby? Sure. Sure? <laughs> Are you sure? And that's why you're doing it, guys. So if you get involved with stuff like that, you know, just go for it. Does that make sense? If I got some times, I want to revisit this again. Eh? Just to make sure that everybody has a clear grasp on that. Uh, yeah, color-coded. I'm going to get to that color-coded, <laughs> you know, color-coded in a while, you know. So... 
you got the, I noticed somebody talking about the spring brake valve and SR1s and stuff, but what happens is there's also inversion valve if you're using a straight truck and that works a little bit differently. You know, that isn't necessarily the same of what I did over here. So, but I'm gonna get, you know, keep on going in the future doing all this. Interconnected system. The brake systems specified in this paragraph are interconnected. They must be designed, constructed, maintained so that upon the failure of any part of the brake maintenance, one or more systems, except service brake actuation, vehicle will evaporate brakes. So when I drain this, do I meet the regulations over here that you saw in your handout? You bet your boots, okay? Absolutely. I met the letter of the raw, and everybody, the manufacturers, have to do the same thing. One-way check valves require each reservoir system be protected against air pressure. There is what we call equivalent device pressure control check valve, it's generally used on secondary reservoir in conjunction with a system per style air dryer. And like I said, this takes, if I do my regular brake courses, it could take a up to two days to do a lot of this stuff you know and we'll walk through I usually walk through from one end of the brake board to the other and by the way I have a you can't see it here but I have a trailer trailer brake board tucked away here too so I can couple these and I walk through the tractor protection valves and stuff it's a nice little easy hit on the road right Bobby yeah you guys Jesus, just, just kidding, <laughs> picking on those poor guys. I'm only kidding. They are definitely, I have a bank of about 10,000 slides, pictures, videos I get from those guys. Plus once in a while, I used to go on the road with them. And it, there's a day and night difference with perception, what you see on the road, than what we perceive it to be. I mean, my, my you know, someday I should do one with just loop all the violations through and let's have a discussion one by one you know this is the one I told you about over here with the chamber force here's my push rod half inch one inch two inch two and a half and I vir virtually bottomed out over there okay if that makes sense that's that's the discussion I had with that brake chamber and of course you have that spring brake in here in that chamber in here okay that park brake and that's that orange, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, both of them are, you know, the spring brake, excuse me, is the orange. Uh, spring brake is green. I'm trying, I'm really trying to rush, guys. And the brake chamber is the, brake chamber is the orange. That's my service in the front. And of course, the spring brake is in the back. And you can see over here that we're pretty close to the math we did over here, you know. So pardon me for not, you know, because my, unfortunately, my mind is working like I'm looking at the clock. I'm working like 20 slides ahead. So, you know, in case you didn't see it in there, this is what we have, service brake, park brake chamber, and so on. Yeah. Spring brake chamber must be caged. There have been people out there that have done, uh, uh, they've had the little green uh, fittings in there where if you wanted to cage this. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, keep in mind that 1,800 pounds of force. First of all, I have a clamp over here. This is old. You, you don't see them anymore. They're all sealed over here. Actually, a lot of them are starting to get sealed even on the service side. But for the purposes, I've had it for years. You can see I got a cutout in here, so I'm not giving up on this. So basically what you're trying to do, if you got to service this portion over here, you put a caging bolt in here like this. You turn it. lock it in and you put this nut right back in over here back in and you just start squeezing by the way if you're on the road or if you're in a shop you know you can purchase a very deep sockets why keep wrenching it over there they work out handy now you're safe to at a minimum replace this service diaphragm never 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 
and again, like I said, you probably won't find any around. You can have access. These guys, like in the back over here, in the day when these first came out, there's a lot of explosions going on. So be careful. I got videos of these things going like a rocket. I reminded you again, right here. Now, I have this caging bolt here. Do you want, want me to tell you the truth? When I change a chamber, I'm going to keep this bolt. <laughs> I'm going to leave it on. Some of these have the aluminum tube, so by the time there somebody needs to use these, you'll never get them out anyway. I'm, and again, in the books, it's not the way it's supposed to be. But chances are pretty good today, if I go on a service call, or even if I'm shop, and all you guys will probably verify it, you need to get something in, the brakes have locked up, you can't start the engine, whatever the case may be. I'm gonna go in my toolbox and I hope I have enough of these. You know, and I know somebody would say, oh gee, you're not leaving it in there. You know, but where's my clicker, Bobby? Getting me all nervous here. Make sure you use them. Slide everything I walk through over here. Keeping it stupid and simple, in case you didn't get it, I have now put air in here to that fitting that's closest to the back, farthest away from the push rod. I push my yellow button in, brakes are released. Every time I step on the brake, okay, now I'm able to use that front portion. If I got a park, out it comes. It's that simple. Yeah. That coil spring will come out and you can see the differences over here. Careful, I don't want to get into this. We have standard stroke chambers and we have long stroke chambers. I don't have the time to do a backstory on why I have these three here had to do with a fatality. But for right now, just so you know, you can always identify the long stroke with the square bolts over here. There was a time that you also did this. You would look at the width or whatever way you want to look of this center portion over here. And the reason that happened is you have that portion over there is because you also have, if it's a long stroke, I'll try to get my diaphragms. If you get a long stroke, speaking of changing the service diaphragm, you know, look for marking. If you know it's a long stroke, your diaphragm will say on there ELS. You don't have to screw zoom in, take my word for it. But what happens is one is deeper than the other. So what happens is with that uh, long stroke, reason you're able to go, for example, a type 30 readjustment limit is two inches, long stroke two and a half inches, you can picture this being deeper and you can roll out a little better, eh? like this farther and maintain forces for that two and a half inches versus, versus uh, two inches. So always be careful of that. And I could spend time and ask every, anybody that if I, say for example, a chamber went bad, I had a long stroke chamber on the one side okay, of the axle. Now that went bad, it's the end of the day. I gotta change that chamber. Gee, I go to the shelf, I don't have a standard stroke. Okay. I, I mean a long stroke, but I happen to have a type 30 standard. My question is, can I put that standard on that other side? And if I was doing a class thing, you know, I would ask that question and I would have guys say, oh no, you can't. Yes, you can. It is not in the regulations. It is not a violation. Industry practice wise, I'll be very honest with you. I would want to keep both of them the same balance of the brake system if that makes sense so i had to throw that in there because i got in an argument with uh in a class i did and i had some one enforcement guys in there and the guy went out you know while i'm in the middle of it 20 minutes he comes back he says oh you're right about that i says yeah really you just lost 20 minutes of class because you doubted me so i just i'm just kidding guys all right there's a lot of tools that you know you pick up from the enforcement guys work really 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 nice because a lot has to do of course keeping the same on both sides this is a nice little tool real quick you go in there what type of chamber do i have you put this tool around and this will read type 30 on there or if it was type 24 so real quick in and out 
watch an out clock. We're not doing too bad here. We're not doing too bad here. Eh? And if I think of something, I'll come back to this. There's a few things I want to get through. So these, this is what it looks like over here. Eh? This is the old style. And in this fatality, I don't have time to do the backstory. This caused a little bit of a problem, okay? And because of this over here. So one of these days, you know, you know what? I'm going to force you guys to keep on coming over here and doing the lunch and learn or come to the classes. So there's a backstory to this. Now pay attention to this. Zoom in, Bobby. I want you to pay attention to this line over here, the plastic line. And I'll, I'll walk you through this, so, you know, I'll tell you exactly what happened, you know. Uh, when you go into Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Stands, you get into hoses, it'll tell you that the hoses have to be flexible. If you, for example, just think about it, you got the axle, you know, this is my chassis and the axle is here. The axle moves, right? Okay, chambers are fixed to the axle, so now you need them to be flexible, so you use the rubber hoses. However, you can use, believe it or not, going from one side of the axle, one side to the other side, if it stays within the axle boundaries, but just like you saw there, you got the plastic line. Typically where you're gonna wind up using that plastic line is on the park side. You push your button in, you're releasing the brakes and it actually goes to the other side. So right there, it's released. The service hoses will be rubber, so all day long it goes up and down, you're fine. But you're gonna have a rubber hose going to the park side. What happened over here, and this is why I said that we're lacking some training. This, this is so, it's huge guys, it's huge. We live in a world of assumptions that the guy that works in my shop, the guy works for a fleet, they know what they're doing. Well, evidence shows, and I get it through my shop, I see it on the roadside and stuff, that's not so. Guys put these in backwards, they don't stop and think. I change the chamber, I just assume, and this is what happens, assume, assume. Like I said, I have hundreds and thousands of slides on this kind of stuff. Eh? So basically, it got put on the wrong side. Eh? Same vehicle. Look over here. It's touching. You know what the problem is? Somebody changed the chamber. You can see the old markings over there. Okay? And usually you have a provision that you can do this because you want to make sure this is lined up in there. Because over here, of course, there's a slack and sometimes you make a catch over here. And you're looking to push out, it's all worn. So this, these, this is the kind of stuff that happens out there. This is not rocket science. You get pulled over on the side of the road, this jam now is loose. Believe it or not, it's a violation, you know? Right, Bobby? Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for verifying this. <laughs> you know, and you can see over there. This is nothing. To, it, you know, besides not. Uh, I guess it gets frustrating. Besides not kind of, kind of being stupid. It's like this should not be rocket science. If you're putting this up there and you see this hitting your frame over here, okay, something should still tell in your mind. Did I do something wrong? Look, guys. I'm included in this. I, I didn't wake up one morning knowing everything, but common sense has to prevail, you know, and I gotta, you know, if it's something doesn't look right, fix it. Uh, this, believe it or not, this I plucked out from years and years ago, okay? The feds like to do a study of every once in a while to see what's going on. You know, they have these blitzes, you know, yet they still have all these blitzes. So this, believe it or not, was taken when we had the old slack adjusters here, the manual. Everybody, no, I shouldn't say that. Not everybody, you know, you young guys, if you go and look at this, you'll probably say, what the hell is this thing here? That's kind of weird looking. Yeah, you gotta put this collar in, put your wrench on it, and that's what you had to do. So when the brakes wore, you better be down there adjusting them 
I hate the word, you know, but, you know, manually, manual labor. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. All right. So this comes from that area there. Fully adjusted, cool brakes 342, hot brakes 393. So now the adjustment is at a limit. Look what happened to the stopping distance here. 458, 693. That's huge, guys. First of all, the reason that happens is, just think about it, when you're stepping on a brake, that driver's going down the road, he's doing some brake applications, you got 80,000 pounds on there, you're going down the hill, doing whatever, doesn't really matter. It's a heat machine, heat machine, heat machine. Doesn't matter if it's on your bicycle, motorcycle, car, pickup truck, a brake system is a heat machine. That's the only way it works. Well, not necessarily. You could hit a wall, so that'll stop you too. But, just, just kidding. But it's a heat machine, so just think about it. What's gonna happen with that metal in a drum? It's gonna expand, 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 right? It's gonna expand, you know, get larger in diameter. Well, the push rod's gotta do what? Follow it to get the shoes to it, right? Eh? So we lose on this. It's what I held in my hand, the simple one over here, just the good old days. You know, a little worm gear, this goes on your cam spline manually adjust it okay but the problem was that we did not keep up with this we did not do it you know didn't think about adjusting them and if we weren't faithful your brakes would be out of adjustment that's in the early days here's an example of one of those manual ones pull out the button nobody adjusts it look how far this is going out eh? So the feds did a study, again, this was back in the day, they look at manual slack adjusters, 9,540, everything's a percentage of the percentage of the slack adjusters look. So they looked at manuals. They found that 26% were at two inches or more, readjustment limit, by the way, two inches, and I have a beef with that too, by the way. 13%, two and a quarter inch. Automatic slacks, only 15% were at two inches and more, only 4% at two and a quarter inches more, and voila, this came into existence over here. Automatic slack adjuster, mandate all vehicles, air brake system, manufacturer after October 20, 1994. Actually, Bobby, uh, I think, I can't remember who, Tanner, I think from Albany, one of the enforcement guys, he just, he had a vehicle that was after, I believe it was in 1995, 96, he pulled them over, they were all manual slack adjusters, so he had sent me a, uh, you know, pictures of it, he says, I just want to make sure that I'm in the right page here, you know, uh, riding the guy up, yep, absolutely you are, you know. Note on hydraulic brake system, the mandated date is October 20, 1993, you know, so you can go in these sections, part 393.53 A and B, if you don't believe me. Eh? If ASAs are to work properly, foundation brakes must be maintained at a high level. We have clearance sensing, stroke sensing, automatic slack adjuster, either clearance sensing, stroke sensing, will adjust slack when it senses set stroke. Clearance sensing adjuster, just when the proper clearance between brake drum, brake shoe is not retained. Your most popular guys that you're gonna see out there, Haldex, Gunite, Stemco, Stemco is uh, Goose and Bruner, you know, they use theirs, they bought them out. Eh? They maintain a nominal distance. I'm not going to split hairs on this portion here because for me, I want to know when I install or replace these slack adjusters, am I doing it correctly? That's my big thing. You know, that was nice to know. So I'm one of those that I like to cut this stuff up uh, over here. I like to take things apart. That's how I learn. I come from old school. Here's a Haldex, for example. Okay. And you'll see a Rockwell over here. And I'll massage each one just for a few minutes. This is a Rockwell. Okay. I cut this out over here. I'll take a couple of these and I'll do a little something with them. And this is a gun eye. Okay. But if you're looking at it on the slides and your handouts, the one thing that's common to all of these, okay, you have a lot of intricate parts compared to that old manual. And that's why I said, listen, you got to make sure, you got to make sure, okay, <clears throat> you got to make sure that you maintain these. 
<clears throat> they're automatic slack adjusters. So this is the biggest point I want to make. And I'll pick like for example, I'll pick this one here, this Haldex. When these automatic slack adjusters first came out, I used to get a lot of calls. Guys would say, hey, listen, I go to back this thing off and it goes <laughs> with my 716 socket. Am I breaking something? Nah, you are and you aren't, okay? But that tells you for one thing that it is kind of working properly. Well, in the day, we used to go up to these manual slack adjusters and we used to do that. It was part of the preventive maintenance program. Vehicle would come in, you go underneath there and you would adjust them up. It just, it was a normal practice. So we carried these over to these. The point I'm trying to make is that now, however, we didn't know any better when these came out. So we're going, okay? And it's like, wow, you know? What happened was these last pretty damn good and we didn't realize that we're actually hurting these slacks. Okay? This, this Rockwa, for example, if you don't depress this paw, okay, and you can see over here, you would ruin these teeth and stuff and from that point on, this is your adjustment over here, you know. I got a thing that I can show how it works and everything. So the big message had to go out, you know, and I wound up doing that with every single class of mine, is that listen guys, you get a vehicle in with automatic slack adjusters, keep your hands off of it. Don't go adjusting it. The first thing you need to do is have somebody step on the brake and check the push rod stroke. If it's where it belongs, leave it alone. Plus it also tells you that it actually is working. Why mess around with something isn't working? Because if you went and you went to move it without taking push rod stroke, how would you know that it was even working? And that becomes very, very important, and I'll show you in a couple of slides here. Eh? So if you walk away with anything with these, take your stroke measurement first. Eh? And are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. You gotta get used to it, and that's why I had this slide over here. You know, there's a lot of things can go wrong. You might have brackets. I got one in a shop right now, a Haldex with a different bracket. It's like the, the shoes totally walked away. They're st sticking out of the drum because nobody kept up with it, you know? So I was thinking of something else when it comes to Automax. It will probably come to me. Yeah, you know, I did some stuff for our DOT highway department and they found out uh, that even the material sometimes, and you probably can't see it real good over here, but if you look at this bracket over here, it's kind of deformed. So they had to make sure they get that they get good brackets someplace, better metal and everything, because all this stuff affects it. If it isn't working properly, you gotta look at some different areas, okay? Never take your granted that brakes will always be adjustment. Many factors could result in the automatic slack adjuster not capable of meeting the proper push rod. Proper installation, worn cam pushings, bent or binding push rods. You have those in your handouts, guys. Eh? And that's why a periodic check's required. A slack adjuster that over adjusts can cause brakes to drag can cause brakes to overheat. This can cause drums to expand a larger diameter. Please go through this because I look at the clock. I need that. There's something very important I got to do here. Eh? We're getting pretty close. I'm going I'm to back off on this. By the way, in 2016, uh, federal for your annual inspection, what happened was in 2016, I believe it was June, a new kind of a regulation came up they put it in appendix a for your annual inspection that if a vehicle comes in and the brakes are out of adjustment it is not okay to adjust the brakes eh? get it in adjustment and let it rip you got to figure out what's going on with that so I'll do that and when I get into annual inspections I'll do that okay guys the last thing I'm gonna do again real fast is just so every because I'm adamant about this thing here one more time. I'm gonna build it up with air. Okay. While it's building up, wet tank, of course, supply tank. Secondary takes care of my front. 
primary takes care of my rear, right? If I want to go down the road, all I got to do is push my button in. Everybody remember? I need a minimum 60 pounds. By the way, if I let this leak down, it gets someplace around 40, 20, then it automatically trips out. But you know, that's for another time. 60 pounds, my waiting air goes through here, two-way check valve, in, whichever is higher pressure. I push the button in, allow the waiting air to go to the back of the chamber. That's my red line over here to the back. Try to keep it in mind. And now when I step on the brake, from this point on, I have rear brakes, I have front brakes all day long, okay? Makes sense so far? We might be a minute or two late, guys. Bear with me. However, I did one of the most important things over here. I purposely, my button is in, I purposely drained this tank. I don't have to kick it anymore. <laughs> it's like... Uh, what we discovered was so so important okay so i don't care what happened for whatever reason i lost my air here and the nice thing that we discovered was that when i go down the road over here gauge went down i lost my air i will still have some brakes Am I going to have all the brakes? No. Just because the way the system is plumb, no. But at a minimum, I lost this here for the rear. My spring brake stayed in, okay, because of the two-way check valve. And now when I step on the brake, are you kidding me? you got to be kidding me. How many minutes, Bobby? Four. Four? <laughs> I'm a practicing Taekwondo technician or whatever you want to call it, so I love kicking things. I'm messing with you guys, okay? This truly, truly happened, okay? I don't, there's a huge backstory with this, but this is quite a few years ago, somebody lost, uh, they had a, put a hole in the primary, guy stepped on the brake, he had no brakes, okay? And he kind of went through there was a fatality involved and so on and so on you know it was shame but what they found out was okay two years prior to that somebody changed a foot valve okay and when they did it they had crossed the lines over here because I didn't get in a foot valve I you need to go again and need to do it through a whole class but basically what happened up to this point as long as the air was up here on both tanks didn't matter I always had brakes, I showed you. But because these were crossed, okay, not a criminal fence, the guy just did not know, okay? And if he would have done this check, he would have realized that something went wrong. Stop, do I know what's wrong? No, but it's not working the way it should. So, but, this is it. This is the biggie, guys. The guy did have brakes. I'm gonna come round robin, round circle all the way back. The guy had brakes. All he had to do was look at the chamber back there. Did my brakes come on? You bet your freaking boots they came on. Why did the guy not pull this button? And I'll tell you why. Because all his life, that driver, okay, Goes in a vehicle in the morning, builds up the air, pushes this in, goes down the road, steps on the brake. Okay. Goes to his destination, pulls the bark button, walks out, goes to lunch, and the, over and over, day after day after day after day after day after day after day. This guy takes over. Never in a million years did the guy even think about that. This here, and it's not marked, this is a park emergency button okay. that means emergency if something goes wrong I pop this out I will have those mechanical brakes does that make sense if I was a driving instructor someplace and you came over and I showed you how to drive a road I'm so adamant about that that if 
I would be sitting in the passenger seat over there, and you're over there, you're doing the driving. Eh? We're lo I'd look in the mirrors, and I would reach over at 40 miles an hour, as long as nobody's around. I would pop that button, eh? and hopefully you have some brown tracks in that seat, but I'm gonna prove a point that you can't have a better lesson in how the system works when something actually happens to you. We did good. I know I rushed here. I know I truly, truly rushed over here. Eh? But like I said, I'm the first one to admit that, you know, we have a lot of, I'm try, I always try to put 10 pounds of whatever in a five pound doo-doo. Eh? I know I kind of fumbled in a couple of slides because I'm trying to be a little bit ahead of the game over here and, you know, 20 steps ahead. You know, I feel the pressure on. So real fast, let me see. Uh, Yeah. I'll try, I'm trying to go through it. Listen, guys, I apologize. I, I see some really nice, good remarks. I, I really, you know, I believe me, I appreciate that. The, the good remarks is what really keeps me going, you know, because this takes a lot out of me between working in the shop and everything else, and then I do all these trainings all over. It's kind of wearing two hats. But this is my passion. So, look, yes, I saw a couple of those. I gonna make this a once a month thing I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do next I'm tossing around either do a little bit of a, the mechanical portion of it you know the actual shoes stuff like that or I'm actually thinking because we have a, kind of a huge trend toward disc brakes I'll do something with disc brakes maybe not nothing you know like uh, erratic or whatever but I got a disc brakes on display I got a good PowerPoint and by the way I will be in Kansas for Vision 2023 too in March I can't remember what what day it is so thank you very much guys God bless have fun. Enjoy.